Good morning. I hope you're doing well this Wednesday. Uh, thank you for joining us. I hope you receive a blessing from this spiritual boost that we have in the middle of the week. I wanted to share a lesson with you today. I want to talk about temptation. And I was hoping you're having a good week. I hope you're looking for the weekend. And it's happy Wednesday. I think I can see the weekend from here. It's a cute picture of the little cat, and it's kind of like us. We're trying to see that weekend. For me, I'm looking forward to Sunday and also the day of relaxation, so I hope you are as well. I wanted you to look with me at a lesson in Genesis, and I want us to talk about how much temptation affects our lives. And I want us to realize how embedded it is in society, and it goes back to the beginning of time. You know, most of us relate to temptation when we think about food. And I, I can certainly relate to that because I need to watch my diet as I get older. I need to eat better and be healthy so I can be stronger. And we think of temptation specifically, we think of desserts. That's a source of great temptation. Uh, maybe you're probably thinking right now, I could sure use a candy bar before lunch or maybe a milkshake with my lunch uh, or some of those things like that. And then you really know in the back of your mind that's not a healthy part of your diet or maybe you're watching your sugar levels or blood pressure or cholesterol but it's still very tempting and when we're around it we know that that's not going to be a good thing so we need to not go to that restaurant that's going to have that great banana pudding or that great chocolate cake I hope I'm making you ready for lunch time but I want us to look today at uh, Genesis chapter 3 Go back to the beginning of the Bible and we see this temptation. And look at how Satan uses the temptation in our lives. And maybe you'll recognize some of these things in your life and it'll help you to overcome them. Read along with me. It says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the fruit trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. We're all familiar with that story. You know, we know that Satan was disguised as a shrewd serpent, and he came to tempt Eve. You and I realize as we read the Bible, we know that Satan disguises himself in many other ways. But Satan also had once been a glorious angel. But he rebelled against God. And due to his rebellion, he was cast out of heaven. So we see that Satan tempted Eve by getting her to doubt God's goodness. This is the first thing that he does. He implied that God was strict had all these rules, that God was stingy, he was selfish, he didn't want them to have what he had. He didn't want to share his knowledge of good and evil. You see, Satan made Eve forget all that God had given her. And instead, he made her focus on what God had forbidden her from having. I want you to think for just a minute, doesn't that sound just like a little child? Our children come to us, Mommy or Daddy, you just don't want me to have fun with the other kids. That's why you're telling me I can't go and stay out all night or I can't go see an R-rated movie. Everyone else is doing it. You're just old-fashioned, Mom or Dad. They're focused only on the pleasure and not the outcome of the behavior that's going to result from this pleasure. This is what Eve was doing. This is Satan's best tool. This is the way he succeeds in getting Eve to sin. And it's the way he succeeds in getting us to sin. Ever since then, he's been busy getting people to sin just like he did with Adam and Eve. He even tempted Jesus. Let me remind you of this 
scripture that we celebrated at Easter when Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. This is Matthew 4, verse 1. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You and I know the rest of the story. We know that Jesus overcame that temptation. That he didn't give in. He did not sin. Satan tried very hard, but he was not successful. Why does Satan tempt humanity? Why is he trying to get us to sin? You know that old saying, and I hear it, hear it so often, misery loves company. That's what Satan's trying to do. So why was Jesus successful in overcoming his temptation? Maybe that can help me. Maybe it can help you as we're trying to overcome this temptation. As you would recall, Jesus was in the temptation in the desert. What did he do? He prayed. He prayed. He prayed. He worshiped God. He kept reminding himself, God's will, not his, be done. So persistent prayer, persistent praise, persistent worship, and staying in the presence of God all the time, that's the key to overcoming temptation. How could Eve have resisted this temptation? By following these same guidelines that you and I can follow. First, we've got to realize being tempted in itself is not a sin. It's part of life. You're going to be tempted. We're all going to be tempted. That's not a sin. It's what we do about that temptation that determines whether it's a sin or not. If we give in to that temptation, then we've sinned. That's the test that we're under. Are we going to be obedient to God? Are we going to do God's will? Or are we going to give in to our desires of the flesh? So to resist that temptation, what do we need to do that to, to overcome it? First, we need to pray for strength because most of the time we can't overcome it ourselves. Sometimes we have to run, and I mean literally run away from that temptation. The best thing for me to do if I'm going to try to stay away from desserts is not go down that dessert line. Say no when we're confronted with what we know is wrong. And remember God's goodness and his love for us with all the blessings that we have now and in the future. God has sent his son Jesus. We just celebrated Easter not too long ago. So we're reminded that we're covered with grace. We're reminded of the goodness of God, the blessings God gives us. And sometimes we also need good friends, godly counsel that helps us, that guides us, that reminds us. Maybe we need to confide in them. Hey, this is something I'm weak in this area. Please help me overcome it. They'll probably confide back that they're weak in another area and they need your help as well. So it includes us having prayer time all the time, asking God's Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us, to keep us away from these temptations. So just like Eve, we fall into trouble when we dwell on what God forbids us from having or when we're so focused on what someone else has. You can enjoy their blessings. You and I need to enjoy our own blessings that God has given us. So we need to dwell on the blessings God has given us, the promises God has given us. Take time to consider all that you do and all that you have and thank God for it. Then your doubts won't lead you into sin like they did Eve and you won't overlook the many blessings that you have. I want to ask you, if you would, to join me in prayer as we close this devotion today. Almighty God, we praise you and we thank you so much for your blessings, your mercy, and your love. I ask that you be with us today and help us to take this devotion to heart. Help us to overcome our temptations. Help us to be obedient to you that we might receive your continued blessings here on earth and in eternity in heaven with you. We thank you, God, for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me. I hope you have a blessed day. I look forward to seeing you soon.